So to hold the piece, we're going to go ahead and make use of this nice Cal Industries collet chuck right here. We're going to chuck this directly into the, the forge jaw. I've got a 5 8 5 C collet in there. And we'll put this in here and we'll get this indicated true. And we can fine tune it with the, with the shaft in there if we need to, if it, if it doesn't seem like it's running like it should be. And that, that just uses a standard 3 8 Allen key right there. And I think today we're going to use our Edge Technology tool post mount indicator. All right, that's one and a half a thou right there. Okay. So I was using the last word there just to check and make sure that the uh, collet chuck was running straight in the jaws. We'll see how far out it's running in the collet now. About three thousandths. All right, close enough. This is one of those live centers that has the interchangeable tips. The very handy center to have around here. This was just an El Cheapo that I think dad had bought from MSC years ago. And it's been a pretty good center. Although I think it, I think the bearings are getting bad in it, but it still works pretty good. That comes with that little drift there. Just pop it out, and then that's the smallest tip that I have for mine right there. And we'll just use that one. All right, I think we're ready to finally start cutting our taper. I was going to point this out. This is the tool that I'm going to use right here. This holder I picked up in Moultrie, Georgia, at the swap meet here recently, and I haven't identified the exact tool that is yet but that's one of those that uh, it's it basically sits in a neutral position it doesn't have negative rake but the insert itself that's on there has a lot of positive rake built into it this looks like an aluminum insert for cutting aluminum 
and I'm hoping that it'll work fine for this. It'll, it, hopefully this will provide a nice free cutting uh, tool and not pr uh, push on this very hard because we have a very tiny center in the end of that shaft right there. That's, that's what worries me about this right here is getting down there and to our 0.1 diameter and taking too heavy a cut where it's trying to shove off or it tries to push back in that collet. So I'm probably going to be taking it kind of easy on this. You know, we'll definitely show you some cutting action, but once you see a few cuts, that's, it's the same thing. Back there on our taper attachment, I've got this position where it needs to be. That's something that you got to do too whenever you're setting up to uh, make a cut on something. You got to position the the carriage where it needs to be so that you have a you have enough travel each direction. And if I crank this thing down, my tool clears the end of the shaft right there. All right, and then we come back the other way. got it to where our carriage will bump up against the tailstock and you see we've got clearance right there and we come back in there's not a lot of backlash on this machine as far as our taper attachment everything goes with our lead screws so I should be able to come on back and as soon as I move forward it's going to be it's going to be tapering again okay so we'll go ahead and get our cut going and I'm probably going to run flood cool it that's a that's another reason why I was excited about doing it here too I'll probably run just a really light flood coolant to help keep this shaft cool and the cutter cool. And let's get going. Alright, so I think one thing that I forgot to point out, get your tool up there close and do your end feed on the back stroke right there. All right, maybe I'm wrong. It's been a little while since I've done this, so I'm um, gonna come up with the compound. I've already got my cross slide set to a zero. There we go. All right, in feed on the back. So take the tool all the way back and then I have to feed in and then I bring it forward and start cutting. I couldn't remember which way it was. So far, these are just 50 thousandths cuts. It's easy to keep up with. Right, I'll show you what I'm having to do to eliminate all the backlash. I, I noticed that it was uh, cutting steps in there. So what I'm doing, I need to bring it back further. I'm bringing the tailstock back out of the way. And I run the tool on back further. Go ahead and feed in. I'm going to go in another 50. And then we're going to bring it right back up and get ready to cut. Bring the tailstock right back in. 
lock it in and start cutting. So we're about halfway through with our with our taper now. Remember we got 12 inch of length. This is 12 inches right here. And I've gone halfway, 450 thousandths on the dial. We're gonna be going a total of about 900 or, or as close as we can get it anyway. So halfway should be about six inches. So that's a six inch scale. Like it's cutting just past that. So we're right on track. I'm just gonna keep on going. I will say that, that I don't like the finish that tool's leaving, but it's got a nice easy cut. You know, it's not creating a lot of tool pressure, so I'm gonna to continue to use it, and then I'll just make sure that I blend that thing down to, so that it's got a nice finish on it. All right, we're using our flood coolant now, and it's making a nice difference on the, on the cut, and it's keeping the shaft nice and cool. So that 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 uh, it did improve the surface finish is what I'm saying. And you see a little bit of steam coming off there, so it's doing its job there now. Thought I'd give you a little shot of where we're at, turn everything off, and just kind of look at it. Finish has greatly improved since I used the flood coolant there, so that's helping out a lot. All right, so I've dialed in 750 on the dial, so that leaves us uh, 150 thousandths to go. I was just going to see about where it's at measuring the end right here with some calipers. And right on it, quarter inch. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there. It's going to be real, real close. I'm just going to have to, you know, fudge that tool right there against the face and run the center up there at it. So we'll see how far we can get it in there. I just reset everything for another 50,000 pass. All right. So it looks like it looks like we're going to get really close to it. I should be within fifty thousandths of, of it being where we want it on the end there. I believe I'm. 50 thousandths away of being diameter on this end right here and I I slowed the feed rate down I noticed that it was trying to chatter a little bit out here in the very middle I'm starting to hear it now let me turn the mic around so see if you can hear it So we may have to just try to sneak in on that last 50 thou <laughs> and I'm having to uh, stop the when I bring the cutter up to the end of the shaft I'm just turning the machine off or I'm turning it from spinning and then 
setting everything and then starting it up. All right, we're down to our last cut, or should I say our last 50 thousandths. I may back off here and do it and try to take it in two cuts. So we're gonna go ahead and get this reset. And first thing I wanna do is just kinda double check where we're at. Hundred and forty nine, one hundred and fifty, right there at it. So it's going to put us right there. I'm still getting one hundred and forty nine. All right, I'm going to go in twenty five. And we're going to bring it back up close as I can by eye all right yep it's touching it <laughs> see that I knew it was gonna be borderline all right I think we got her we know we're at least 25 thousandths off right here. I'm gonna go ahead and back it down to a 5 thousandths feed rate. All right. Everybody hold your breath. All right, so here we are in our last cut. I just checked it and we're 25 thousandths big. So I just dialed in 25 and let's try to get this cutter set. I'm gonna have to turn it on to see what's going on here. Matter of fact, and all right, we got her where we want it. We're good. I'm gonna kick it up to our fastest speed on the lathe, which is 700. We've been running 532. There we go, John, we made it. Looking good. Let's see if we run out our 12 inch length like we're supposed to. Probably gonna have to cut that. Perfect. We just made it. Man, I was a little nervous about this. Look how small that end is. I knew it was small when I just read point one, but If I would have cut that center any bigger, we would have had to like cut into the center point just to get it there. I mean, it's right, I can just catch the edge with my fingernail there. So I'm gonna hit it with some emery paper to uh, polish it up some, but it's got a nice finish on it. It's smooth, see it's not catching my, my skin or anything, but 
I'm going to go ahead and get it polished up and, and this sucker will be done. All right, there she is all polished up. I hit it with my one of my mill smooth files, try to draw file a little bit. I hit it with some 220 and then some scotch bright. So we got a nice smooth finish across there. And I'm ready to go ahead and take this thing out because it is done. I was afraid to even touch this thing. You could feel it trying to flex on you whenever get the mic over here you can feel it flexing a little bit whenever you were polishing it up all right John I hope you like it man Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little project. This was, this was actually fun for me to make. I've been looking for a nice little job to do to show the taper attachment over here on the Monarch. I've had a lot of requests for it. So this had popped up. John asked me about it and, and I told him, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you one of those made up and we'll get a video out of it at the same time. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed and I, and I hope what I showed here was was helpful to you in, in some way. I know that I didn't go into full detail and like I said that I wasn't going to but I tried to show it a little bit of a general overview on how how the taper attachment works on the machine and you know and how how you can set it up how one way you can set it up there. So I'm just happy that the shaft turned out good on the first time that I didn't have to scrap it and start over again. So I'm gonna get this coming to you John and We'll see all you guys on the next project, all right?